Good day, ladies and gentlemen of the Total Debt Freedom World. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a credit card. Um, I've put out hundreds of videos on the YouTube channel and on our Facebook page now for quite a few years, and I've realized that I've never actually put out a video on how to use credit cards properly. And I've had a few people comment below in the comments saying, nobody ever really taught me how to use a credit card, or if only I had known how to use a credit card when I was younger, I wouldn't be in this situation. So today is your chance to understand. So please uh, like and share this video with somebody that needs to see it. Behind me, I've got the Board of Truth. And on the Board of Truth, we're gonna be getting into, I hope you guys can hear me, we're gonna be getting into a visual. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my top tips on how to keep your credit score high and everything tickety-boo so you stay out of debt. So I've got a makeshift calendar here. I know it looks beautiful, but I'm gonna be using two different colored markers, green and blue. Green we're gonna use for our regular monthly expenses. The whole point of a credit card is to basically use it, accumulate your points and fly around the world for free. Now, depending on the type of rewards card that you're gonna have, because you're definitely gonna to wanna to get some kind of reward for using the card, you might get a cash back incentive where it's a, a voucher that's sent to you at the end of the month. I get one from uh, Costco and the credit card provider. So I get two separate ones from them. I get uh, air miles on a personal credit card. Um, even business cards, if you're an entrepreneur, you can get mileage for use as well. So the whole point of using credit cards is you use them, they don't use you. The mistake that a lot of people make is they twist it around and credit cards use them. And it's the credit card companies that get rich and make billions of dollars off of us as Canadians because we're not making good choices when we're using credit cards. Let's hop into the calendar. So. Let's take monthly expenses. Uh, this is a 30 day month. Let's say on Tuesday we gas up, there's 60 bucks. Uh, we go out for lunch on Friday because we're packing our lunches Monday to Thursday with our coworkers and we spend $25. Uh, we get some groceries on the weekend and we spend another 180 bucks. Uh, again, I'm just using random numbers here. Uh, we have to gas up the car again here on Monday. And then we're going to have to, um, I don't know, pay for parking in the city when we go in to deal with a dentist appointment or something like that. Uh, all, all of these things are, are regular charges that you're going to incur in your day to day life. They're not they're not like extracurriculars. It's what you need to live to carry out your daily function. So um, some people have argued that you need a credit card to live. You really don't. But if you have to have a credit card, again, you can use it to collect points and you can use it for your daily expenses so that you can fly around the world for free. Carrying on, another Friday, you decide to go out with your coworkers, you didn't pack lunch, you spent $30. And let's say maybe you went out after work for a couple of beers with some friends and some wings and you spent another 40 bucks sitting around chit-chatting for a few hours. Uh, it's Saturday night, it's date night. You're gonna take out the missus and maybe have dinner and a movie and you spend 90 bucks. Uh, come around next week, hey, maybe you went to the family cottage too and you have to gas up the car twice or you had to throw in a little extra gas or something. You blow $120 during that period of time. Uh, it's winter time, you go, you go night skiing or something like that. You spend $120 because you take the kids out or something, tubing, let's say. Again, uh, later on this week, you skip the after work beers and wings, but you go out again with your coworkers, another 30 bucks. Oh, we ran out of groceries. We gotta get groceries again, right? So let's spend another you know, $220 in groceries over here. And then we carry on through the week and we gas up again for another 60 bucks. You have another appointment for something else, another $10 in parking here on that day. And you carry on through the month with a few other expenses. Let's say you've got your, net, your Netflix expense and your cable bill and a bunch of other things that hit your credit card. Uh, you have a gym membership over here. Uh, you know, there's your uh, Netflix, your uh, internet uh, service provider and things like that for the home. Let's say it's 120 bucks all in and you gas up another time, and that's your month. Now, these are all things that you're going to need to use to basically you know, take care of your regular expenses. It offers conveniences where you don't have to you know, walk into the gym and pay $25, they just hit your credit card. Um, you know, things like your internet service provider, you don't have to you know, go to a bank and, and, and create a draft or a check or money order and mail it into them, they just hit your credit card. So there are the luxuries of you know, tapping and go at the gas pump when you gas up, it makes sense, okay? It can be useful, it can make your life easier. So those are the regular monthly expenses that you would need to, to live by. Now, I kind of threw you know, like a date night in there. Let's, let's throw the date nights in 
a black or sorry in a blue marker because they're not life necessities they're nice to have because you want to do them same thing with taking the kids out to the ski hill um, you know let's say you do a couple of date nights another 120 bucks here for dinner and movies and maybe dessert or something like that and uh, what else could you do for fun that may not pre you know present itself as a regular monthly expense you want to go to the LCBO and get a big case of beer because and you're gonna get some ribs because you want to do some barbecuing and you spend an extra two hundred dollars to entertain some friends because it's your turn to host at your house with your coworkers or your hockey team or something like that okay so that's an example of how you can use the credit cards let's just add this up now Okay, so that got me to $1,460, okay? Not a small sum of money, but you've put your gas on it, your groceries, your you know utilities, gym membership, extra gas from traveling up to the family cottage, taking the kids tubing uh, down the ski hills, a couple of date nights a few cases of beer and uh, ribs and wings to, to host at your place with some family for entertainment. Uh, you've been to the LCBO and got your stuff and gassed up again. So that's, you know, that might be a regular month for an average Canadian. Now you might ask yourself, okay, that's great. So how, how do I use credit cards? Well, your billing statement runs on a, usually a 30 day cycle with most credit cards. So for me, mine are usually due anywhere between the 24th and the 27th of the month is when they're due. So, I'm going to go online when I see my statements due. It's usually around the first week of the month and I'll create a bill payment online with my online banking. It's fairly straightforward. Once I've created that bill payment, <clears throat> it's automatically going to pay on the date. Now, if I bank with bank A and my credit card is issued from bank A, I can pay on the date that it's due. Okay. Now, if I'm dealing with like my Costco card, for example, is uh, issued by a service provider, I'm not going to mention the name of the, of the bank or the credit card company, but it's not with the bank that I deal with. I usually make sure that that's paid one to two days before. So there's no late charges, because if it's due on the 25th and I set the bill payment for the 25th, they may not get the payment on the 25th. It might arrive one or two days later, which will be a late payment. You might incur interest charges or penalties and it could negatively affect your credit rating. So just keep that in mind. Again, if you're dealing with one of the big five banks and the big five bank issued you that credit card, you can pay it on the date that it's due, but you can automate this process. Now, the whole idea is use, use a card for your charges, collect your points and fly around the world for free. You're paying off the bill in full every month. You're not carrying a balance. Now, let me make this clear. You're not entitled to anything, okay? Just because you have a credit card in your wallet, it doesn't mean that you can go and blow $2,000 on a big screen TV and a man cave setup or handbags and shoes or whatever it is, you know, whatever luxuries or, you know, wants that you think that you deserve, you don't deserve them if you don't have the money to pay off the bill in full. You want to look at a credit card like it's cash, okay? All it's doing is it's just delaying when you take the cash out of your bank account. So rather than applying cash to your payments throughout the month, all you're doing is taking the cash out once on the due date when it's due, and then you pay down what you borrowed against the card. There's no interest charges. You get your full points for free. And at some point you're gonna be able to utilize them for a trade-in for a reward, flight, travel, accommodations, whatever it is that you're doing, car rentals, it doesn't matter. That should make perfect sense. If I've missed anything, leave a comment below and let me know. I'll be happy to answer your question or maybe record a more in-depth video on the subject that you might have. Now, that being said, that is really how you use a credit card. Now, Top tips for having a great credit score uh, so you don't have any detrimental issues with your credit rating because, I mean, what we do is we get people out of credit card debt. We've been doing this for a long time. I've personally been in the credit collection business for almost 20 years. You know, we've settled close to $100 million worth of debt and helped thousands of Canadians. I've got a little bit of experience in this when I'm giving you this information. So I'm not coming from a place of inexperience. This is something that I've, I've seen. It's, it's a pattern. It's a trend. Not doing this will get you in debt. End of story. Follow this and you won't be in debt. Top tips for uh, managing credit cards and keeping a very high credit score. Now, in this scenario, we've got $1,460. One thing that you always want to make sure of is that you never charge more than 50%. Hold this down over here. 50% of your limit. Okay, so that's number one. The reason why you never charge more than 50% of your limit 
is because as soon as you go past that threshold, depending on the credit card issuer, and they all have their own algorithms and rules, and I can't, you know, cookie cut one out to let you know this exactly how it is. But my rule of thumb is if you charge 50% uh, or less of your limit, you'll be fine. Anytime you go beyond 50%, so if I was regularly charging, let's say $1,500 a month on my card, I manage my budget, I'm good with money, I'm not going out of bounds, I'm not spending, you know, $3,000 on man cave nonsense for my own pleasures and then I have to carry a balance and carry it forward. That's what trashes credit. I'm managing my budget. So if I keep it, let's say around 1500 bucks a month, I need a card with a limit of 3000 bucks. It's as simple as that. So never charge more than 50% of your limit is top tip number one. Number two, I'm gonna use an acronym here because I don't have a lot of space and I wanna write big so you can see it, is PIF. And what PIF stands for in the credit and collection industry is pay in full. When you get your bill and it's due on that date, you pay it in full. You do not carry a balance. If you carry a balance, you're gonna be paying anywhere from 19% to 28.8%. And in some cases, it goes up. Credit card companies can unilaterally decide to increase your interest rate if they don't like your payment habits or the fact that you might have uh, or might be carrying greater balances on your credit cards, okay? So never carry a balance, always PIF, pay in full. Um, number three, always pay on time. I talked about this earlier. If your due date is your due date, pay by your due date. Also, there's there's no security with credit cards. They don't offer any kind of you know asset to your well-being. I've done other videos on my channel on Facebook. You can take a look at the the playlist of videos that have been uploaded for more information. But those those are really the main tips and tricks that you need to understand. So that's it, guys. I hope you found that video useful. If there's somebody that needs to see this, please share it with them. Leave a comment below if you have a video request for something special or different or something's not clear here. And of course, like the Facebook page, subscribe on YouTube if you're watching it there, and we'll see you guys in the next video. This is the mic drop right here.